Howdy. Welcome to the Rhinestone Roper Place. I've been gone for a few months on tour doing my show, but I'm home now. And I'd like to talk to you today about making your own blanks. You know, the first thing I got to say, and you know why I got to say it, is blanks are dangerous. At close range, blanks are a danger to your eyes. They're a danger to your ears. They can blow your fingers off, put a hole in your hand, or a hole in your skull. Sometimes blanks are dangerous because they're not really blanks. If you're using the same gun in your show with blanks that you use out to target practice or to shoot rabbits, you are upping your risk factor. So it's best not to use the same gun. This is my spinning gun. I use it in the show. I don't fire it in the show. It never gets blanks. It never comes near live rounds. So if you can do that, then you're, you're safer. But I have had an unintentional firing with my blanks. It's been years since that has happened, but it, but it happened when I first started. And I didn't hurt anyone. I hurt myself a little bit, but no one else. And the reason I didn't hurt anyone else with that unintentional firing is because I followed the code of the West. Now, the code of the West, as I was taught it in my family and set by example by all of my friends, the code of the West has four elements. One is you feed the visitor. Two, you tell the truth. Three, you never point your gun at anyone. And four, you never point your gun at anyone. <laughs> if your gun is never pointed at anyone, ever, then you have an unintentional firing. You just look stupid. You haven't hurt anyone. So we'll talk about how to make your own blanks. Uh, before we do that, go ahead and push like and subscribe. And, uh, and let's get going. First, you got to decide what powder you want to use. I buy my powder online from uh, Powder Ink. They're marked with an F factor. Mine says F G. I'm not sure what the G stands for. It might be grains or grams. I'm not sure. But the F means this is a, a can of 1F black powder. Now, I use black powder because it has smoke and because certain F factors of the black powder will burst a balloon at about 12 feet. If you're not worried about bursting balloons and you're not worried about smoke, then I would use a modern uh, type of powder like Pyrodex. Pyrodex won't, won't make your guns dirty, and, uh, but it doesn't have much smoke to it, and it won't burst a balloon. But it's, it's safer than the black powder is. If you want lots of smoke, then you might use black powder. But what F factor do you need? We'll take a look at these powders here. As you can see, this powder, these grains are fairly small. Now that is 2F black powder. If I had any 3F, I put it right here and it is, it is uh, much smaller grains than that is. It's a very fine powder, the 3F. It won't burst a balloon. This is 2F, and you can see the, the grains do have a little bit of size to them, but not much. That will burst the balloon. This is 1F. It gives you a little bit more distance on, on where you can burst the balloon. You can see those grains are much, much bigger than in the 2F. And this is cannon powder. You can see those grains are huge. Uh, you have quite a distance on those, but I'll tell you, you want to think twice before using cannon powder, because if you're doing fast draw, you're going to, and you're doing as fast as you can, sometimes you have a misfire into your holster, and those grains go into your pants and into your leg, and those will go right through your pants and they will go into your leg and you'll have something in your leg you have to dig out and it'll burn the heck out of you. These other powders, especially this 1F, will burn a hole in your pants and they'll burn a hole in your leg. Of course, it's not light-threatening. Uh, this, uh, this powder, not so much. Next, you have to have a shell to load. Now, I always load 45 long colt shells. And I've, I'll tell you, I've used this shell for, for many years. I would buy the uh, shells new. And this hole right here is the primer pocket. The primer is what your firing pin hits 
makes a little spark and sets off the powder that's in the rest of your shell. Now, as you can see, there's a, there's a primer hole in that primer pocket. Now that hole is almost the size of that furniture nail head. I, uh, I don't know what size that is. This is not a scientific uh, rocket science type thing. But this nail will go into that hole, but the head of this furniture nail will not. That just demonstrates about how big the hole is. When I first got this, this shell had a very, very tiny hole, very tiny primer hole. And uh, when you get these shells, you want to drill that hole out so it's a little bigger than what, you've, what they come with. With that small hole, that blank will blow your primer back just a little bit, blow it out of that socket just a hair. And so it will jam your gun. It will not uh, rotate. So if you drill that hole out a little bit, for some reason, your primers don't blow back on you. And I use a punch to uh, punch through that hole and knock the primer out. Now, if you use that small hole that that shell came with, then you'll have a very fine, a really small punch, and those things will break off. But if your hole is a little bit bigger, then you can use a more sturdy punch and, and punch your primers out. Here's our primers. I buy primers in a box of a thousand, and then I dump them into this uh, baby food jar for safekeeping. And then we have our, uh, our hand primer. It's a handheld primer. I'll show you how to use that in just a second. And I got my piece of wood. Now, I made this piece of wood for a different purpose, but I thought, boy, I got this surface here. I can use that to hold shells. So I drilled out a bunch of shells at about three-eighths of an inch, and uh, I can hold about 20 shells in this block of wood while I'm making them. And this last hole is just a hole with a small part of that hole that goes all the way through the wood. It's got washers in there that I can rest rest a shell on and punch the primer out through that hole in the washer. So in, in making my shells, my first task is to take the used blanks and knock the primers out. Now I'm looking at these primers, you can tell these over here have a dimple in the primer. That silver thing there is the primer. Those have a dimple, that means they're spent. They've a uh, firing pin has already hit those. These two have no primer in them. I've already taken those primers out. These two are smooth, and you can tell that those, those primers are good primers. So I've got my uh, shells in my, in my uh, block of wood here to hold them. I'm gonna take the first shell and place it over the top of that uh, washer right there, over the top of that hole, so I can punch a primer out. I'm gonna take my, my punch and stick it in there and feel for the center of the primer. Now if I'm off to the side, I can whack on that all day and it's not gonna do any good. So I want to be in the center of that uh, primer hole. And then, let's give her a couple taps. We knock the primer out. We'll do the next one. When you're tapping on it, you can tell if you're in the center or not. It's, it's really firm if you're off to the side, but if you're in the center, you can tell there's a little bit of, little bit of softness to it. So that's all it took to take the primers out. Now we got to put new primers back in. So we're going to take our handheld primer. This has a trigger right there and a plunger that comes up and pushes that primer into the shell. So we just have four shells to make. So we're going to sprinkle four. As you may be able to see, I spilled them in there and uh, you want those turned so the, the open end is facing up. You can see that there's three of them there that are upside down. But since they're heavy on the, uh, the top side and there's ridges in that tray, I can shake them and they will sometimes, they'll all turn correct side up. Those are all set now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shake that a little bit. There you can see the one of them uh, found its way into the pocket. Now this also has lasted many years for me. This, this, this is a $20 hand primer set. As I pull this trigger down here, 
that primer will be pushed up into the shell. And as you can see, there's a, uh, a lip right there. And that's where the edge of the shell goes in. We'll take our shell, slide it in there. And everything, if everything is lined up, I should be able to press that, press that plunger in. Now I didn't press it in as far as it would go. I pressed it in as far as I thought I needed to, to push that primer in. Let's see how we did. Now it looks good. I'm going to run my finger over the top. Now if your prime, if your handheld primer shoves that primer in too far, you'll be able to feel that there's a, a little hollow spot above your primer and your firing pin may not reach it. If you didn't push it in far enough, you'll feel that that is sticking out just a little bit. If it's sticking out a little bit, then it won't cycle through your gun. So you need to uh, practice with your own gun, see how far you need to push that in, and see how careful you need to be. And you will, after you've done a few, you'll learn just how much to push those primers in so they're the right, the right distance for your gun. And this one, this one is just about perfect. It's, it's sticking up just a hair, but the, uh, the guns I use in the show uh, will tolerate that. So I'm going to leave that one just like it is. Okay, our next one is seated. Put our shell in. Give her a push. That feels good. Now when you're uh, pressing that primer in there, you don't want to be looking straight down that shell. If something freaky happens and you uh, you pressing that pressing that plunger in there, it's conceivable that it, it could make that that uh, primer go off. It happened and you were looking right down to the end of that, debris might get into your eye. That one looks good. These blanks I'm going to uh, make so they can be used by the girl that rides my knife wheel. I put a girl on the, my wife usually, sometimes in the, it's an assistant, but usually it's my wife. She rides the knife wheel, I get her going, throw knives up each side, then I throw balloons in there and she draws a pistol and shoots those balloons out of the air while she's spinning. Now when she's shooting, she's shooting up into my tent. I don't want real heavy loads to go up there and, and uh, make black marks on my tent or possibly burn a hole in it. And I know that uh, I have control of where I'm going to throw those balloons and I know they're not going to be far away so she doesn't need a great distance. So for those balloons I can use half loads of 1F powder. Now I have a, a powder applicator. Now the 2F powder goes through this applicator real good and for some purposes I use the 2F powder and I can put them in with this with this applicator. But the 1F powder doesn't go through there very good because it's too too heavy. Pour this stuff into my hand like so and I'll just uh, take a shell and scoop scoop it about half full. These will burst the balloon every time from uh, from about 10 feet and that's all the farther I'll be throwing that balloon from where the gun is. Now we need a wad to hold the powder in. Now I don't know probably every every guy who uses these things in a show has their own their own wad. Some use uh, wax and some use florist styrofoam some use uh, nail polish. I use toilet paper. The reason I use toilet paper is every event I go to has toilet paper. <laughs> I got toilet paper in my trailer and there's toilet paper in a porta potty and this stuff works just fine. And I know it doesn't go very far. You take that wad of toilet paper and you try to throw that 30 feet. You can't throw that 30 feet. It only goes five or six or maybe eight feet. But uh, in your shell, it, it, most of the time, it just totally disintegrates. Sometimes the wad will fall 
right in front of me. Sometimes it'll be smoldering, so I, I need to step on it sometimes. And I'm extra careful when I'm in dry grass with these. But I'm usually not in dry grass, and I feel very confident that uh, there's no way this is going to reach reach anybody other than the balloon I'm shooting at. So I just take a wad and put it in the end. And I can take a, a pen or a pencil or something that's that's just about the size of that sh of that uh, 45 caliber shell, and I push that push that toilet paper in there, and make sure that at, it's sealed up around the edges so no powder wants to fall out. Uh, this is a uh, is a hanger. It's a it's a plastic coat hanger. Uh, I think this is where the hook is, and uh, these are this is where the arms are, and this is the hook underneath that you hang your belt buckle on. I just cut it up. This is almost the same size as that shell, so I tapered it down a little bit so it slides in easily. Those four shells with half loads are ready to go. So have fun with your blanks. You want to protect your audience, you want to protect yourself. Careful when you're loading these things. If you're a performer, sometimes you can't get off by yourself. You know, all your equipment is out there, you're loading up for the next show. Someone's going to come up behind you, come around and see what you're doing. And they're going to come around the corner, that gun's going to be pointed at them. So be aware of your surroundings, be aware of people. If someone comes up to talk to you, you just set this thing down. And, and I end up asking, I say, I'm loading my guns, I need you to step back till I, till I finish. Or I finish talking to them, I wait till they leave, then I get my gun and, and load it. Anyway, there's the blanks. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, call and, and give a look to these other videos we're showing here. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much.